Whey protein has, for a very long time, been deemed the king of protein for its absorption, its digestibility, and its stellar amino acid profile. When you see the gym bros shaking up their protein shakes, the money is good that the protein that they're shaking is whey. However, new research out of multiple studies indicates a new protein may be trying to take the crown. But here's the thing. I'm going to introduce you to exciting research, but within that exciting research are some sobering results. And in the end, I'm going to present you with a hypothesis that I'm curious if you'll actually agree with it. So please comment below when we get to that point. Yes, I will respond to as many comments as I can. Okay, so is this the new king of protein or does whey retain its title? Like I mentioned from the top, whey protein is considered the king of protein for a number of reasons, among which is its perfect PEDCAS score, P-D-C-A-A-S, which stands for Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score. Now, there are other protein sources, like eggs, that also have a perfect score, but the sheer potency of whey and ease of consumption makes it, to many, the king. Now, a new kid on the block called beta-lactoglobulin is trying to overthrow whey. The funny thing is that this is akin to Star Wars. Yes, Star Wars. As Anakin is learning from Obi-Wan Kenobi, beta-lactoglobulin is typically extracted from whey protein, making it an even purer form of the protein since whey is separated from milk. So it's almost like Anakin learning all his skills from Obi-Wan Kenobi to then betray him. But does beta-lactoglobulin have enough power to overcome this master whey? Well, one of the things that makes whey protein so potent is its concentration of essential amino acids, especially the most powerful muscle growth stimulating amino acids like leucine. However, like Anakin wielding the advantage of the dark side of the force, beta-lactoglobulin contains even more leucine. And more gets absorbed, evidence in this study. The beta-lactoglobulin, which if you don't mind, I'm going to start calling it BLG, is blue and the whey protein is in, well, also blue, but lighter blue. The line graph indicates the rise in blood leucine over time, and the right bar graph indicates the total amount of leucine over the entire experimental period. In both, you'll notice the BLG condition has greater leucine levels. The point here being that one of the big advantages of whey protein is its highly muscle growth stimulating leucine levels, yet BLG beta-lactoglobulin, contains more and delivers more to the bloodstream. So, by traditional muscle physiology thought, we might expect this new BLG protein to lead to greater muscle growth and possibly greater strength. Luckily, we have a study that looked at that very question. In this study, participants were split between consuming a whey protein or the BLG protein over two months, while also resistance training. Their calories and their total protein were the same. Then again, they see a rise in blood leucine when consuming BLG protein over the previous leucine king, whey. And yet, when we look at the amount of lean mass, which includes muscle, we see no differences between the two protein conditions. In fact, when also looking at strength, while both proteins plus training led to big improvements in strength, the BLG protein was not superior to whey. In fact, since we've been discussing leucine and its muscle growth potential, that's usually reflected in something called the synthesis rate. In this first study that we went over, the researchers looked at synthesis rate, which is the amount of protein produced within the muscle cells. And as you can see, while yes, protein synthesis did increase with protein consumption and exercise, there's no difference between the two tall bars, indicating no increased protein synthesis. Okay, no differences in protein synthesis. No differences in assumed muscle growth. Technically, lean mass is a less sensitive measure of muscle mass directly, but still, there's no hint of any benefit of BLG, although it raises leucine more than whey. Like I mentioned, some exciting data and some sobering news as well. But now comes my hypothesis, which I would like your input on, because it could break open the importance of BLG. 
Before I get into that and get into how to apply this information, there's more data on the hormonal effects of BLG, why BLG may be especially powerful for people with insulin resistance, and more on the mechanisms of BLG. I'm covering all that in the more involved, extended version of this video that you're currently watching. It's included for the Physionic Insiders, my premium research platform, and you get an accompanying article along with all my multiple analyses that I've released for the insiders. Oh, and of course, these perks right here. Private podcasts, live sessions, private community. Need I say more? You can join through the link in the description. I would love for you to join the insiders. Okay, my hypothesis is based on something called the leucine threshold, which is a basement effect of muscle protein synthesis effect of leucine. As in, you have to eat enough leucine to stimulate protein synthesis. Too little does not stimulate protein synthesis and therefore muscle growth. In addition, there's a ceiling effect, as in just ever increasing your leucine intake does not yield more protein synthesis. There is a cap. So how does that relate here? Well, check this study out where four groups of people were given different amounts of leucine and their protein synthesis was measured. Here are the data. The higher the bars go, the more muscle protein synthesis has occurred. Now the black bars are before leucine and white are after leucine consumption. Then we have two different amounts of leucine and two different age categories, making four groups. Notice, crucially, how the young individuals at both concentrations of leucine experience an increase in muscle protein synthesis. However, also notice that the older individuals did not experience an increase in synthesis at the lower leucine levels and only experiencing an increase with the greater leucine consumption. So this speaks to both the basement and the ceiling effect. Now, I promise this is going to relate, relate to BLG in a minute, hang tight. The young individuals are hitting the ceiling at lower leucine consumption as the higher leucine intake did not yield greater muscle protein synthesis compared to the reduced leucine consumption. On the other hand, the older individuals aren't hitting the basement, the initial threshold, with the low leucine, only with the high leucine condition. In simple terms, younger people are more sensitive to leucine and require less to maximize their muscle protein synthesis. And older people are less sensitive, so they require more leucine to achieve the same muscle protein synthesis. Okay, you maybe see where I'm going with this. Now, back to BLG. The reason this relates is because this one study on muscle growth only recruited young individuals. So yes, they had more leucine in their blood from BLG, but if the whey protein levels of leucine were sufficient to maximize muscle protein synthesis, the extra leucine may not be doing anything. So my hypothesis is that there's a possibility that if they repeated this study in people who are in their 60s and older, they might actually detect a difference between BLG protein and the whey protein, as the BLG protein is designed more optimally for those with less leucine sensitivity. So they can take advantage of the greater leucine intake. So let me know, what do you think? Let's discuss. Okay, hypothesis aside for a moment, here's how I think about BLG, good old beta-lactoglobulin. It's certainly enticing, the data are exciting, but for the everyday person, would I dethrone whey protein? No. I think for most people looking at highly concentrated protein sources in supplement form, whey protein still remains king and lord of these lands. Then if you're the biohacker type and you don't care if the limited data indicates no difference, but you're compelled by the extra leucine, I'd still encourage you to stick with whey protein. You'll be paying a pretty penny for nothing of real value. However, if you are a person over the age of 60 and you're looking for a slightly higher quality protein to consume at lower doses, there might be a use case for use of BLG over whey. Alternatively, you could just up your whey consumption a bit. Also, keep in mind that's based on speculation, not on strong data. So, like I said, in most cases, whey protein shall remain king, lord and conqueror of the protein lands. But don't go to the dark lands where muscles don't grow, for that is beyond our borders. 
You must never go there, Simba. But where I do encourage you to go next is where the light touches in this next video right here. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for nerding out with me. See ya.